Greetings, welcome back to Black Bear News. Please remember to like the video and to make sure that you are still subscribed. I don't know if the mic is picking it up at all or not, but definitely it is raining uh, really nicely here. Um, it's been raining all morning. It's supposed to rain for a couple days. I don't know if you can see the drops the drops on me. I had to negotiate my way out to the studio um, without getting everything and especially my computer wet. But anyways, uh, welcome Thanksgiving Eve. <clears throat> I wanted to read this article from Chris Hedges or, you know, go through it, read it, read it and go through it. Uh, and this is an article about Roger Hallam and climate change. It's titled, How to Save the Planet and Ourselves from November 18th, 2019 from Truth, Truth Dig. I'm a huge fan of Chris Hedges and Roger Hallam. So this is combining uh, two people I really like in one, <clears throat> in one go. If you read only one book this year, it should be Roger Hallam's Common Sense for the 21st Century. Only nonviolent rebellion can now stop climate breakdown and social collapse. Uh, and that's, we'll just stop right there and say that's, um, you know, in question on its own. I mean, I that's a fairly large statement. Um, a lot of people believe that probably not much can stop climate breakdown and social collapse. Um, but they're trying to stop <clears throat> uh, a general social collapse and a climate breakdown. I think that's a worthy cause. Um, how to go about that is also up for debate. And, um, you know, we all like to debate that here on this channel. Hallam's lucid and concise book, which echoes Thomas Paine's common sense, says what many of us now know to be true, but do not say. If we do not replace the ruling elites soon, we are finished as a species. It is cogent, well-argued. A cogent, well-argued case for global rebellion, the only form of resistance that can save us from ecosystem collapse and human-induced genocide. Um, <clears throat> truly, if anything is going to save us, we're, it's a major, massive revolution or evolution of our paradigm. Um, uh, nothing else will come close. <clears throat> it correctly analyzes the failure of environmental environmentalist activists and groups such as 350.org to understand and confront global corporate power and thus making uh, make a meaningful impact as we barrel toward e ecocide. Um, we're not barreling towards it. We are in the middle of committing it. We are doing it, and we've already done quite a bit. Common sense for the 21st century is a survival manual for the human species. The corrupt system is going to kill us all unless we rise up. Hallam, a co-founder of Extinction Rebellion, bluntly warns. The activism, protests, lobbying, petitions, appeals to the United Nations, and misguided trust in liberal politicians, such as Barack Obama... <clears throat> making headlines this week. Um, oh my God, we must be saved from Bernie Sanders. And Al Gore, oh my God, we must be saved from climate change, but let me get on my private jet and circle the globe and tell you all about it. Along with the work of countless NGOs have been accompanied by a 60% rise in global carbon dioxide emissions since 1990. The United Nations estimates that this will be augmented by a 40% rise in CO2 emissions in the next 10 years. Hallam, who has long been a part of the environmental movement, says of his past activism, I was wasting my time. We must reduce carbon emissions by 40% in the next 12 years to have a 50% chance of avoiding catastrophe, according to a report last year by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. This is a report, IPCC. But the ruling elites, as expected, ignored the warning or mouthed empty platitudes. CO2 emissions increased by 1.6% in 2017 and by 2.7% in 2018. 
Carbon dioxide levels went up by 3.5 parts per million last year, reaching 415 parts per million. So I was actually correct. Um, we did reach 415 parts per million. We are only a decade away, Hallam warns, from a 450 parts per million uh, level, the level equivalent to a 2 degree Celsius average temperature rise. Let's be frank about what catastrophe actually means in this context. Hallam writes, we are looking here at a slow, agonizing suffering and the death of billions of people. A moral analysis might go like this. One recent scientific opinion stated that at 5C above the pre-industrial mean temperature, <clears throat> we are looking at an ecological system capable of sustaining just 1 billion people. Uh, some people think that might be much lower, <laughs> maybe like 3C or 2C, actually. That means... 6.7 billion people have died within the next generation or two. Even if this figure is wrong by 90%, that means 600 million people face starvation and death in the next 40 years. This is 12 times worse than the death toll civilians and soldiers of World War II and many times the death toll of every genocide known to history. It is 12 times worse than the horror of Nazism and fascism in, in the 20th century. This is what our genocidal governments around the world are willingly allowing to happen. The word genocide might seem out of context here. The word is often associated with ethnic cleansing and major atrocities like the Holocaust. However, the Merriam-Webster Webster dictionary definition reads the deliberate and syst uh, systematic destruction of a racial, political, or cultural group. It is time to grow up and see the world as it is. Hallam writes, there are some things which are undeniably real. There are some things we cannot change, and one of those is the laws of physics. Ice melts when the temperature rises. Crops die in a drought. Trees burn in forest fires. Because these things are real, we can also be certain about what the future holds. We are now heading into a period of extreme ecological collapse. Whether or not this leads to the extinction of the human species largely depends on whether revolutionary changes happen within our societies in the next decade. <clears throat> Real, real quick, <clears throat> even if we even have a decade to sort it out and make those changes, <clears throat> I would say we'd have to do it sooner. <clears throat> and tomorrow, um, I'm going to read an article about exactly what that would look like, um, getting to net zero or, or reducing our emissions on a planetary scale within the next decade. Um, Uh, this is not a matter of ideology, but a simple math and physics. Hallam points out that most predictions by climate scientists have turned out to be wildly over-optimistic. This we know, this we can bank on. Recent science shows permafrost melting 90 years earlier than forecast. Oops. And Himalayan glaciers melting twice as fast as expected. Yikes. Feedbacks and locked-in heating will take us over 2C even before we factor in additional temperature rises from human-caused emissions over the next 10 years. Also another, another recent uh, Arctic Post blog citing that we are, we are over 1.5C. We've definitely breached that threshold. In short, we are fucked. The only question is by how much and how soon, Helm continues. The only question is by how much and how soon. Um, and whether or not, whether we can stop it or not is a really good question, but... Um, I agree with Roger Hallam, try we must. Uh, or there is no try, there is only do. If you want to quote the great and esteemed philosopher Yoda. Do we accept this fate? I suggest we do not. Many self-respecting people who can overcome the human failing to disbelieve what they don't like <clears throat> now accept what is obvious looking at the natural science. But they have yet to work through the political and social implications. Hallam understands that even with reformists in power and the political mutations caused by neoliberalism have not favored the rise of reformers, but instead right-wing demagogues, including Donald Trump and Brazil's Jair Bolsonaro, who accelerate the ecocide. Any change will be too incremental and too slow to save us from catastrophe. Ding, ding, ding. Well, there's actually two things happening. We have you know, right-wing extremism growing, and we also have left-wing um, extremism, if you will call it, or populism, or 
socialism rising as well. In some countries, you know, we have this, in many countries around the world, we have this um, battle, this pitched battle, battle between social, socialist forces or left-wing forces. It's much like the, you know, the 30s, um, the 30s and the 40s, mainly the 30s where you have the same thing going on around the world um, because of income inequality, because of um, huge social upheaval everywhere in, in many countries. And it happened here in the U.S. It happened everywhere. Um, and it's happening now. I mean, you have a left wing. You have AMLO in, in Mexico. You have um, Evo Morales, who's a left wing, uh, you know, for, for all intents and, pur- purpose, intents and purposes, it was a pretty, uh, pretty good leader for the people in Bolivia being ousted by right-wing forces, Maduro, et cetera, et cetera. It's going on around the world. Um, Any change will be too incremental and too slow to save us from catastrophe. Extinction Rebellion has the stated aim of bringing down the ruling elites. It organized last month's coordinated series of demonstrations in 60 cities around the globe. Some 1,832 people were arrested in London alone. Additionally, more than 1,000 people were arrested during 11 days of civil disobedience in the streets of London and in April. You can see interviews I did with Hallam here, here, and here. This is not a matter of one's political party preferences. Hallam writes, It is a matter of basic structural sociology. Institutions like animal species have limits to how fast they can change. To get rapid change, they have to be replaced With new social systems of policy, practice, and culture, it is a terrible and painful realization, but it is time to accept our reality. And he's pretty spot on. Um, Are we going to get? Are we going to get justice? Are we going to get movement with so-called socialist leaders, a la Bernie Sanders or Jeremy Corbyn? Um, Is it going to happen fast enough? Probably not. Um, Even though they bring at least the reality of climate change into the discussion, at least, you know, the acknowledgement is there, but the acknowledgement that we need to actually um, degrow the system. We need to basically bring down the entire capitalist industrial system in order to really make the changes necessary. I don't think anybody's talking about. I don't know if even Roger Hallam is talking about that. Let's see. It is only by bringing tens of thousands of people onto the streets to disrupt and paralyze the functioning of the state and finance capitalism. In short, a rebellion that we can save ourselves. He, he writes, he grasps the fact that the protest must be nonviolent and must focus on governments. After one or two weeks following this plan, historical records show that a regime is highly likely to collapse or is forced to enact major, major structural change, he writes. This is due to well-established dynamics of nonviolent political struggle. The authorities are presented with an impossible dilemma. On the one hand, they can allow the daily occupation of city streets to continue. This will only encourage greater participation and undermine their authority. On the other hand, if they opt to repress the protesters, they risk a backfiring effect. This is where more people come onto the street in response to the sacrifices of those the authorities have taken off the street. Uh, Or at least you hope. In situations of intense political drama, people forget their fear and decide to stand by those who are sacrificing themselves for the common good. The only way out is for negotiations to happen, he writes. Only then will a structural opportunity open up for the emergency transformation of the economy that we need. Of course, this proposal is not certain to work, but it is substantially possible. What is certain, however, is that reformist campaigning and lobbying will totally fail as it has for decades. The structural change... We are now objectively, we now objectively need has to happen too fast for any conventional strategy. He is speaking much truth here. No rebellion succeeds, Hallam understands, unless it appeals to a segment within the ruling elite. Once there are divisions in the ruling class, paralysis ensues, and ultimately larger and larger fragments of the elite defect to those who are rebelling or refuse to defend a discredited ruling class. <clears throat> Mass action cannot just be nonviolent in a physical sense, but must also involve active respect towards the public and the opposition, regardless of the representative responses, Hallam notes. Repressive responses, excuse me. He writes specifically of the police. A proactive approach to the police is an effective way of en- enabling mass civil disobedience in the pre- uh, present context. 
This means meeting police as soon as they arrive on the scene and saying two things clearly. This is a nonviolent, peaceful action, and we respect that you have to do your job here. We have repeated evidence that this calms down police, uh, thus opening the way to subsequent civil interactions. The Extinction Rebellion actions have consistently treated the police in a polite way when we have... We are arrested and at the police stations, engaging in small talk and quite often in political discussions and other topics where activists might have affinity, inequality, unfair pay. If people intentionally stonewall activists, they can become, if police intentionally stonewall activists, they can become more open by a willingness to engage with and listen to them. This engagement can start before an action. Often face-to-face -face meeting with police is effective as they are able to understand that the people they are dealing with are reasonable and communicative. Rebellion will also require repeatedly breaking the law. This will mean time spent in jails and prison. On this, on this level, I really agree with this because, you know, we're, we're asking for not just a, a revolution in the system, but for a paradigm shift in consciousness. Um, any, any path that we have to somehow saving, um, animals, plants, the planet and ourselves is requires a consciousness shift, a paradigm shift in how we think. And in order to bring about that shift, you have to act on a level of higher consciousness. You have to, you have to allow people to to raise their consciousness instead of, and I, I, I have a, I struggle with this. I have a problem with this. I think a lot of people do. Um, I think people want to revert to just um, anger, violence, you know, shit talking, <laughs> um, all those things, you know, and I, I engage in those things as well. And I, and it's a struggle for me, but it's a challenge for me. And, and I work on this daily to try and meet people at a level of higher consciousness, or at least explain my position um, peacefully and thoroughly, I find that it's actually way more effective. Uh, it's difficult though, because you feel like you're going to make, um, and this is especially, especially true in social media because you feel like you're going to make a bigger impact by, um, by just being, you know, hyperbolic and just talk, you know, just, uh, cussing, cursing, cursing people out, um, being as antagonistic as possible. And then people find that really, they find the, your release, the release they get in your words, you know, emboldens them. Right. So everybody feels like they can, you know, they want to just be like, fuck this shit, which is a, a real emotion, but fuck this shit or fuck them or fuck these people doesn't really actually solve anything. It doesn't change anybody's minds. And it's not, a, it's not a discussion on any kind of, you know, grand level. Um, this results in the a rusty being in a contempt of court place in room. Oh, hold on. <clears throat> it would be beneficial to the rebellion for people to be in prison for the major, uh, where am I? Major civil resistance event to create national publicity, writes Hallam, who was jailed for six weeks this fall in London. The best way of potentially doing this is for people to do repeated acts of peaceful civil disobedience and then read out statements as soon as they enter, enter court, ignoring the judge and the court staff. In a loud voice, they might say, I'm duty bound to inform this court that it is, in bringing me here, it is complicit in the greatest crime of all, namely the destruction of our planet and the children and children due to the corrupt inaction of the government regime whose will you have chosen to administer. I will not abide by this court's rules and will now proceed to explain the existential threat facing all life, our families, communities, and nation, and then start a long speech on the ecological crisis. This will likely result in the arrestee being in contempt of court and placed in remand or given a prison sentence. It will be a dilemma for the authorities, depending on the regime, as to how long the remand or sentence would be. If the period of imprisonment is short, then people will be out soon and can continue peaceful civil disobedience. If the, res if the sentence is long, it will create a national media drama which will feed into overall rebellion. Popular assemblies have to be formed to take power and oversee a dramatic and swift reduction in CO2 emissions. The science is unequivocal. The temperature increase must be stabilized at between 1 degree C and 1.5 degree C above pre-industrial levels and CO2 levels must be stabilized at about 350 parts per million. 
We have to find ways to largely eliminate human-created greenhouse gas emissions of all types within a decade, two at the most, and put in place programs to cool the earth, in- including planting trillions of trees to absorb CO2, one of the easiest, or re- rewilding also, one of the easiest and most significant ways an individual can direct and, and decreasing birth rates. <laughs> Please, please include that in there somewhere. I know it's the third rail. You can't talk about it, but we need to have the discussion. We need to talk about this. Um, directly reduce his or her environmental impact on the planet is to eat a diet free of animal products. The animal agriculture industry r- rivals the fossil fuel industry as one of the largest multifactorial causes of climate catastrophe. The danger, Hallam points out... <clears throat> is if we do not act soon, we will trigger runaway climate feedbacks or tipping points we already have, at which no effort to curb emissions will succeed. Some people think we already have. We are, there's evidence we're already at 1.5. So anything we could possibly do now has to involve steps of, you know, somehow reversing the emissions and the damage already done. Fossil fuels must be swiftly eliminated from the economy, including a ban on all new investments in fossil fuel exploration and development, nationalizing all fossil fuel, uh, all industries relating to fossil fuel, and either liquidating them or taking them over, taking over the infrastructure that has to happen on a global level. Um, The U.S. can start by doing that first. Uh, That that's only going to happen through. Massive civil disobedience. That's not going to happen politically. That's not going to happen. I, I'm aware of that. I'm aware that's not going to happen with Bernie Sanders I, or other politicians that are, you know, talking about a Green New Deal. That needs, you know, the Green New Deal needs to be talked about. Consciousness needs to be raised. Awareness needs to be raised. But in actuality, the things that are going to reverse the damage in time are not going to happen with Bernie Sanders or a Green New Deal. It's going to happen... <clears throat> Or unless he realizes that we're going to have to nationalize the fossil fuel industry and all the power grid. He does actually, he's actually uh, supported that. Um, It's going to have to, that's going to have to happen and happen immediately. (laughs) How much resistance he receives around that is the, the operative question. I know I just contradicted myself a couple times in the last statement, but you know, just roll with it. Coal-fired and gas-fired power stations must be shut down within a decade. This process will require massive reduction in energy use that may have to include rationing. Hallam is acutely aware that we may fail. It may be too late already, he admits. But not to resist is to be complicit in this act of genocide. I'm going to read that again. Not to resist is to be complicit in this act of genocide. This is why I res- support XR and Roger Hallam and Extinction Rebellion. And to all those who are like, it's over, it's done, that's it. <clears throat> Not to resist is to be complicit in this act of ge- genocide. This is, o- this is happening now, right now. This is ongoing right now. I know that we can't go back in time and you know, change history. I know we, we can't unrelease the carbon emissions that have already be, been released, but this is happening right now. <clears throat> um, while we have the organization, the infrastructure, the you know, society functioning on some level right now, this is the time to do it. Um, because after things start collapsing, there's going to be no, you know, there might not be internet, there might not be media, there might not be uh, ways in which people can organize in a, in a in a, on a grand scale, on a global scale, there might not be those, we might not have those avenues. We'll have uh, people surviving locally, <clears throat> um, just trying to eke it out whatever way that they can. So let's, now, before that happens, now's the time. Hallam understands global corporate power. He knows how to fight it. The rest is up to us. So there you go. I just present that for c- comment and discussion. I hope you all enjoyed that article. Um, thank you so much for your eyes, your ears, and your conscience. If you would like to support this channel, you can do so at the links below. Until next time, peace.